Hello there and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my reading resolutions for 2016, which includes three books in January, February and March that I have had on pre-order for a while. The first of them is Occupy Me by Trisha Sullivan. She's really original and really awesome and you should read everything she's ever written if you love science fiction because she writes really intelligent and interesting and complex science fiction that's also quite out there and outlandish and different. This new book, Occupy Me, is sort of a cross between magical realism, science fiction and absurdism. There is a girl who is an angel and a serial killer who steals bodies to walk around in and sort of a, a conspiracy beyond this dimension and into others which is quite awesome. The next book I'm really looking forward to comes out in February and that is China Mieville's This Census Taker and oh my gosh ever since I heard about this book and I actually only heard about it bizarrely late last year I was like what there's a new Mieville I don't know about because I knew he had a short story collection out three minutes of an explosion and I already have that story um, and it's brilliant and I love it and I would like to read the collection as well but this census taker the whole idea of it Kafkaesque sort of like surrealism with his usual sort of style to it I was like oh give me all of that give me it now grab your hands if want um so I've had that on pre-order since I heard about it and I am so excited to read it basic premise of the story is there's a young boy in a lonely mountaintop house who experiences a very traumatic event and tries to escape but fails and he's sort of left locked in with his deranged father and wanting to escape to the town down below when someone comes knocking and this person who knocks on his door changes everything or could change everything and apparently it's surreal and terrifying so the third book comes out in March and it is the final book at last of The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater and that's The Raven King. For some reason I thought that Blue Lily, Lily Blue was the final book. Don't ask me why I thought this but I did. So yeah I've had to wait for this one and it's been on pre-order for as soon as the pre-order came out I pre-ordered it. Just boom, done, got. So basically what happens is in March when that book comes out everything in my life is going to come to a stop until I reach the end end of you know anyway on to my reading resolutions I didn't know if I was going to set any reading resolutions this year because I feel like last year I had a really set thing going on that I wanted to do even though I sort of like bodged the rules a trifle completely um I didn't feel like maybe this year I needed to be so strict with what I read and then I thought no actually I've got a really busy year coming up and I know what I do when I'm tired. When I'm tired I put off reading. I mean I've been reading Animal Money and it's taking me so long to read it because it's getting to the evening when I need to read and I'm picking it up and just thinking I can't concentrate. So I've just been putting it back down again and that's no good. It's really no good. So. I want to make a resolution to read some of the more sort of complex chewy books that I have had waiting around and not been reading because when I've started to read them I thought oh this requires more thought than I can actually give at the moment because my brain is woolly. So I mean when I do start reading this is the thing when I start reading I can actually concentrate and do it it's just the will to do it is difficult to find when you're tired in the evening. So that is my resolution this year and on the sort of back of that because a few of the things that I have to read that I haven't read because of the chewiness are short story collections and because I feel like I don't read enough short stories and I would like to, the very top of my reading resolutions for 2016 is to read more short story collections. I have a couple to show you. This is Clarice Lispector's The Complete Stories. I have had this for quite a few months now and I've read one story in it and it was brilliant but also chewy and I sort of didn't read anymore because lazy. Secondly, Amelia Gray. I've wanted to read her forever and another chewy writer, another one I know I won't read unless I say right I have to read these even though I've wanted to read her for ages because I'm lazy, she's chewy. That just sounds weird. Anyway, that's another one I really want to read. There are also a few more collections that I have had listed for ages. Um, firstly, I bought the big weird fiction bundle that was curated by the Vandermeers. Um, and there's a complete collection of Lena Crone's fiction in that. And that is next on my list for definite. Once I've finished Grey and Lispector, I am going to chew in to the Lena Crone's. And because I've read partially some of them and yes, 
amazing. Another author I would like to read is Argentinian. That's Silvina Ocampo and her short fiction is like Lispector's. It's quite um, cutting edge and different like Lena Crohn's as well and yeah I, I want to buy and read her collection thus for their faces. Um, I have had it in my samples for a while now and I keep going back to it and I keep thinking yes I really want to read this so that's another one that I'm going to read. After a campo, um, in March this year, Thomas Ligotti, whose work I've never read, and I don't know why I've never read it. I've never read Thomas Ligotti. Why? His first two collections, Songs of a Dead Dreamer and Grim Scribe, are being released as a collected volume and with an amazing cover. And um, so that is next on my list. I will be buying and reading Thomas Ligotti's first two collected collections collected collections and really looking forward to that because yeah I don't know why I've never read him before. Idiocy. Just idiocy. Last but not least in my short story reading resolutions um, an author I have literally had on my Kindle app with samples bounding. I literally have a sample of everything she's ever written is Kuzali Manakilev. She just writes these jewel-like little strange stories and I keep going back to the samples I have and reading them again thinking oh I want this but it's the same thing as Amelia Gray there from independent presses and they can be quite pricey even in the Kindle edition so I've been like oh I can't justify it I can't justify it but this year I'm gonna justify it and I'm gonna read them because it's about time that I stop just going back to them and rereading them in my samples and just bought them and bloody read them because I really obviously want to and that is a resolution this year to read more short stories and these are some short stories I really want to read so I'm damn well gonna do it. And they're also quite chewy. I mean everyone that I've mentioned here quite chewy. They are not just surface stories there's quite a lot to unpack. I enjoy them. I enjoy the sort of encapsulatedness of them, the concentratedness in the same way as I enjoy poetry which is another thing I want to read more of this year because I want to write more of it this year. So yeah I'm going to be ploughing through all of Jen Campbell's videos for lots and lots of poetry collections that I can read. I already have Hyacinth Girl Press bookmarked so I can just basically buy everything because everything looks so pretty and you can read the samples and the samples are just like oh yes I love that so mm -hmm. that is a thing that is also happening the reading of the poetry and I am very excited about it because I do love poetry I just like very strange and unusual poetry. One of the things I really want to work on this year is my poetry. Um, yeah I really want to work on it and make it better and make it sort of more like the poetry that I like to read because I feel like I can get there if I just do some work on it. So yeah, love poetry. Poetry is awesome. Um, the only other part of my resolution is sort of like a general resolution um, and that is by the end of the year I want to look back and feel like I've read a nice mixture and, and a nice diverse mixture as well. Um, I've read quite diversely anyway last year and I just want to continue that this year you know writers of colour and women writers um, I just want to keep going because I found so many brilliant and interesting authors last year and I feel like I found so many brilliant and interesting authors to read this year and I just want to continue that trend if you're only ever reading books by white dudes then you're kind of locked in a room you know and there's a whole universe of interesting and awesome writers out there and I want to go explore it I would like to read some non-fiction as well but let's face it that ain't gonna happen and I think we're gonna have to do a whole separate video about my feelings on non-fiction and why it is I find it so difficult which is basically just going to be ADD in massive letters across the screen that's it that's, that's the entirety but I feel like I need to do it I feel like I need to talk about non-fiction in particular because I need some recommendations of non-fiction that is more fictional in the way that it's written because I don't know where to start even I mean I feel like I left university and all my research ability just went boom you know it went and I don't know where it's gone and it's annoying because I've got books that I want to write this year that I need to research and I've forgotten how to research and it's really irritating me so yeah anyway that was a ramble as well sorry ranty ramble that's it for today those are my reading resolutions I hope there's some interesting ideas in there and maybe some authors you haven't heard of that you're inspired to go and check out because everyone I've mentioned there is awesome pretty much that's it they're all awesome and thank you for watching bye bye